Well, after all that, my next guest is the CPAC Australia co-founder and national director, Andrew Cooper. Andrew, welcome. Oh, thank you, Fred. Thank you. And good to see you uh, only a day or two after the event. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it was a great weekend. Firstly, it's not easy to put together an event like this, partly because the centre-right and conservative demographics are quite disjointed at the moment. How do you decide, Andrew, what to put in and what to leave out of an event like this? Uh, well, look, it's, um, it is disjointed and, and the purpose or one of the one of the purposes and mission of CPAC is to not be party, partic uh, party specific, but to really focus on the values that are the uniting forces of most of these parties on the sort of right and the libertarian side. And those, uh, you know, values centre around kind of uh, freedom for the individual and, and freedom, uh, free enterprise. And uh, most of the parties do subscribe to those values. Uh, of course, though, each of those parties are trying to make their own uh, particular points, and it is difficult sometimes to structure a uh, uh, a uh, speaker lineup that uh, makes everyone happy. But you know what? The purpose of CPAC is not to try to make everyone happy. The purpose of CPAC is to try to uh, create uh, an environment where people can discuss, in friendly terms, the ideas that are brought up at CPAC. And I think, I think in the main, we achieved that uh, really, really well on the weekend. Yeah, I agree. I imagine one of the difficulties is for it to be a political event. I mean, the P stands for political, but to try to minimise the, the sort of political tribalism of it all, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I mean, um, look, in the, in the main, I think, I think the feeling you get at uh, CPAC and certainly the feedback I've got, literally hundreds of messages, is that... Uh, is that uh, that tribalism goes across the whole conference. It's not, there's not a bunch of, uh, there's not a lot of people there in their own little silos looking to squeeze out others. It, it, there is this feeling of fraternity, I think, at, at CPAC, and particularly now, right, the, the feeling is at the moment is that the, the left are kind of on the march, they're taking over. And so my takeaway from the, uh, from the uh, CPAC conference is that there's a lot of disaffected people with the state of the nation the state of the nation. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they're confused about what the path is, where the, which path to take to go forward. But the main thing is that we discuss these ideas, we distill these ideas, and hopefully we can agree on a way that we can take the nation forward. Yeah. What was the highlight of the event for you, Andrew? Uh, for me, uh, to be honest, um, I thought the opening ceremony was uh, controversial in, in, in a way, but I, the whole overarching message was that... Uh, despite wherever you come from, we are one, we are all together. And then Jacinta came on after that and just smashed it out of the park. Uh, and I think, uh, I think uh, you know, she epitomises the hope that all of us have on the broad right, uh, all of those that believe in those ideals we just discussed before. I think she kind of epitomises that. And uh, I think we all have uh, great hopes for where she'll end up in her political journey. And as you know, Fred, she did win the inaugural uh, Freedom and Hope Award, and yep. uh, she was very, uh, she was kind of very emotional about that because you, you know she's a fighter. You know uh, those that know Jacinta know the uh, the rubbish she she's got to put up with from the politicised left, from the authoritarians that try to drag her down, and for her to you know stand up there and show us how much it meant to her to be recognised in this way, I thought was just fantastic. 